Hello, everyone. I have my space helmet on. I don't know. It's a little small for my head. <laughs> on the way to Star Trek. There we go. <laughs> Hold on. Can you still hear me? Yep. Awesome. Yes, pretty much. Um, let's wait a minute or two, I guess, for people to join. Hello. I didn't, I didn't know we were supposed to come in costume. Uh, you know what? You're welcome to. <laughs> as long as you're on brand. <laughs> All right. We'll have to look around. Yeah. Reese looks ready to take off. I know. I wish I could, like, let me see it. <laughs> it's supposed to be a space helmet, but uh, my head is too big. Looks or the more, helmet is too small. It looks more Knights of the Round Table, actually. <laughs> It's also fighting with my microphone. All right. So while well, people are joining, maybe um, as we wait, um, here's a challenge as we wait. Maybe in chat, tell us where you're from, if you're comfortable sharing. It would be nice to see where everybody's from. I'm going to bet people are from all over. Oh, Belgium. Nice. London, Germany. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> very, very nice. All right. I'm going to give it one more minute. Um, I'll also hit record in a minute. It's recording. Oh, it is recording. There we go. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, a lot of different places. Maybe, maybe one more exercise as we wait, if you're up for it. Maybe in one word, tell us how you feel about Starshot. It can be good or bad. Excited and hopeful, I'm reading. Excited, excited. Curious, nice. Intrigued. Excited, optimistic, unsure, <laughs> yeah. Flying, confident. Necessary, I like that too. Confused. Not surprised, some people are confused. Um, confident. It's about time. That's four words. <laughs> awesome. Very good. All right. I'm going to get us started, if that's all right. Um, so this meeting is going to be a little bit unstructured, but I promise you that future meetings are going to be more structured. And what I wanted to do in this meeting is basically catch you up a little bit about what has happened between DrupalCon and today. All right. Uh, and let me share my screen. Um, and I'm going to be jumping around a little bit uh, between different documents. Um, all right. Can you see my screen? You can, yeah. So I'm going to try and cover a few things, but um, I figured um, maybe we start a little bit with DrupalCon because I don't know if everybody was actually at DrupalCon in this meeting, but um, and I can invite some of you to speak as well. But um, at DrupalCon, I obviously announced uh, Drupal Starshot, and at least in my view, it was very well received. It was an overwhelmingly positive reaction uh, to Starshot. An example of that was we um, we had Bird of a Feather sessions, BOFs, and they were extremely well uh, attended. We did two of them, and people started calling them like super BOFs, I guess, because we had a circle of people that was pretty large and sometimes like a second row of people as well. And people asked a lot of great questions uh, about 
uh, star shots. Um, and we're going to get into some of that here today and in future sessions, we captured the questions. Um, and then following um, DrupalCon, there's also been a lot of sort of, you know, blog posts being written about Starshot. It would be nice to compile an overview, maybe, but I've seen and read at least, I think, 12 or so, maybe even more, um, which has been really, really great to see. Um, I've also, since DrupalCon personally have been having calls about Starshot with agency owners and people pretty much every day. Uh, so there's also been kind of a, a lot of emails in my inbox that have read to great conversations about Starshot as well. Um, I don't know, Gabor or Lori, do you have any kind of thing, anything to add here? I, I don't think Gabor is on actually. I, I feel the same way that you. Uh, it was a lot of excitement during the week. At least a lot of the conversations that I had that week were defined by the keynote. I think it was hard to have a single conversation that week that would not include Starshot in one way or another. So it was a very unique DrupalCon from that perspective. A lot of consistency in the in the types of discussions that I was having. Uh, lots of excitement around Experience Builder, which is part of Starshot as well, uh, including the single directory components. Um, it seems to be one aspect that quite a few folks are uh, really excited about. Uh, we also did some uh, additional Q&A sessions during the um, summit day. So we participated at the nonprofit summit as well and, and received great questions in there and, and great feedback as well. It seems like in that uh, summit, at least there was a lot of excitement about Starshot as well. And and, and it felt I, I felt that people could see how the Drupal Starshot could help the nonprofit uh, space. Um, yeah, and it's been great to see the excitement continue online as well in terms of blog posts and uh, having 177 people join the, the Zoom call. So I don't know what what should we call this this call. It's not a it's not a buff, but some sort of super Drupal super meeting. Zoom. <laughs> super Zoom. Yeah. 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 No, it's good. Um, and. FYI, one of the things we've already done is we reached out to the DrupalCon Barcelona team, uh, which is the next uh, major DrupalCon, and we've asked them to implement like a, a Starshot track, basically, so we can have a whole series of sessions. And um, that team has already, you know, made that happen. So that is going to happen. So expect a lot more Starshot related content at uh, DrupalCon. So. As if 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 you've seen the Dries note either in person or the recording, you'll know that uh, we did a couple of things. Like on every chair was a sticker, and people were invited to write on the sticker how a pledge, like how they might be able to contribute uh, with Starshot, and that was great because people put the sticker on, you know, their badges, their backpacks, their laptops, whatever, and it definitely created a number of really great conversations and you could kind of see um, like all these pledges and some of the kind of excitement um, that, that there was around Starshot. At the same time, in the same keynote, in my Dries notes, um, I also invited people to pledge online because we figured, you know, stickers disappear after a couple of days. And obviously when we go home, we lose a lot of that information, <clears throat> these pledges. And, and so, we created uh, the Starshot page on Drupal.org. Um, I'm sure you've all seen it. Uh, this is d.o slash Starshot. Um, it's a good place. I'm sorry because I'm logged in. I get like some of the uh, customized change layout buttons here that you may not see. Um, but um, anyway, we added a countdown uh, counter, I guess. And then we are also have been adding information uh, on this page, and I'll I'll talk about some of this um, uh, in a second. But one of the things I want to draw your attention to is also the frequently asked questions. So this is a good page to keep an eye on, um, and it's also the page where people could pledge. And um, and kind of show you this real quickly. But uh, we we basically created a simple Google form and asked people to pledge digitally, and we asked um, how they can how they might 
be able to contribute. And you can see we specified um, sort of kind of different roles. We also ask people about how much experience they have and what aspects of Starshot that they might be interested in working on and um, a couple of other questions. And as you can see here, we had 437 responses, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, you know, you can see some of the, the experience that people have. So, I mean, unbelievable, really, how many people pledge to get involved. And so our big next challenge is to activate um, these people. And there's a lot of people that want to help that aren't even, you know, they haven't even pledged based on my inbox and conversations that I've had. Not everybody even knew about this form, which is understandable. And so coming back from, um, from DrupalCon, I basically brain dumped all of the things that were in my head. And I started meeting with Lori and Gabor um, pretty much every other day, I would say, or yeah, maybe even more than every other day. And we started organizing everything in a sheet. And by the way, this is not necessarily public. It's not necessarily secret either, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of, about what happened between DrupalCon and, and now. And then I promise you will create better structure and more community engagement uh, in, in sort of the next uh, few weeks. But you can see we created a long list of things to do. Um, you know, collectively we assigned it we, um, to different owners. We set dates to it. And we've actually been working through a lot of these things. But one of the things we felt we needed to do is engage all the people that have pledged. And there's a lot of different things we want to do here. But for starters, we decided to come up with this engagement calendar, which obviously you've learned about <laughs> because you're here. Um, but the plan, as you probably know, if you're in this in the Zoom, is to have a number of kind of webinars or Zoom calls, super Zooms, whatever we want to call these, to try and get you up to speed and also to try and help you find your way. So... Obviously, today's call is this one, um, where I'm just kind of giving you an update, and I'll talk a little bit more about funding and governance in a second here. Uh, but we have, we will have other um, calls, and like I'll just pick recipes as an example. It doesn't really matter. We've reached out to key people behind these initiatives, and these initiatives are key components of Starshot. So in this case, Alex and Jim and Adam, uh, and we have scheduled these future Zooms with them. And and the format that you should expect for these meetings is that we give you a quick update on the initiative. What is it? What is its value in the context of Starshot? And why is it a key component of Starshot? We might show it to you. So you can really visualize where we are. Talk a little bit about the roadmap, but then we want to really focus on helping to activate you. So most likely we'll do things like we'll create... Uh, meta issues or we'll uh, create, you know, kind of issues on drupal.org on, you know, very practically, um, be very practical about how you can get involved and we'll walk you through some of these issues. All right. And we're doing this again with a sense of urgency. As you can see, we're going to have uh, all these, um, all these Zooms um, in like what the next, uh, you know, month or so or less. Um so pretty rapidly, one or two a week. Um, and um, we, we're hopeful that that way, a lot of you can kind of find ways to get involved. Uh, we also recognize there is a lot more to do. Uh, this is not the only way that we're going to help you activate. Um, and I'll talk about some other things in a minute uh, here as well. But this is something that we felt we can do because there's a lot of information that a lot of us have that we haven't kind of spread or shared with you. For example... Um, in the Dries notes, I think I shared one mock-up or wireframe of um, something that we've been working on, but there is actually a bunch of wireframes and I only picked one screen <laughs> to show you. So like in the next meeting, we're going to uh, show you more of the wireframes as an example. So think of it as going deeper beyond what was in the Dries notes uh, with a focus on uh, activation. Um, Everybody that pledged, we added to a mailing list and I emailed uh, the group. You can see that here. Um, 
And then, as I mentioned, we've also been adding things to the Starshot page. So this exact calendar that we brainstormed in that uh, Google Sheet, we uh, Gabor actually has also published um, on the DDO slash Starshot page. And so if dates change, if times change, uh, that will be reflected here. We try to be uh, mindful of time zones. Uh, so if you look at the time zones, uh, some of these meetings will be in Europe friendly um, hours, I guess. Uh, some of them are a little bit more US friendly. So we try to kind of mix it up so that everybody can attend or, or at least create some fairness, I guess. Uh, and then what we will also do is we will obviously record these meetings and we will share the recording. So we'll create an archive online where people can go watch the recording uh, if they can't um, attend the meeting in person. We might even uh, summarize the meeting uh, as well. Like we haven't quite figured that out yet, um, but I promise you we'll create an archive of all of these. And so if people want to join later, they miss the meeting, they can uh, join as well. Maybe I'll take a very quick pause here and see if there's any um, burning questions. No burning questions? All right. Now, of course, going forward, as we get into more details, uh, we can try and do better matchmaking because we have, um, you know, what was it? 437 people that pledged and we know what they want to help with. And so we can actually... We have people's consent uh, as well to email them. So we'll try to do uh, some better matchmaking and some better uh, organizing as well. All right. Um, so talked a little bit about uh, DrupalCon updates. We talked a little bit about the community engagement plan. Uh, we recognize we have a lot more to do there, but at least for the next month or so, we are going to rapid fire uh, information at you and hopefully direct you to areas that you're interested in. Um, okay, so one other thing, I wanna talk a little bit about the Certified Drupal Partner uh, Program as well, and what we have been doing there. Um, and actually, maybe before I do, um, let me uh, share something else. So on the engagement calendar, so we're actually, hoping to build this out, you know, all the way to the launch of Starshot. <laughs> um, so you can see we still have a lot to do, but like our big next milestone will be DrupalCon Barcelona, which is a hundred and, whoops, 116 days away. Um, and so we're kind of working backwards a little bit from DrupalCon Barcelona. And in a future session that we'll have, we'll talk a little bit more about what do we think are good milestones for Starshot. Uh, for DrupalCon Barcelona. DrupalCon Barcelona will be roughly the midpoint, um, roughly. So we'll be halfway, because I announced that we would try and launch in eight months. Um, and so DrupalCon Barcelona will be roughly in half. And uh, I won't go through this here, but we try to kind of brainstorm some of the things that we wanted maybe to demonstrate at DrupalCon Barcelona uh, to show uh, that we are making great progress, but also that we're on track. So we're kind of working on a working backwards plan. Okay. But more to more about that in future meetings. Um, and um, yeah, just wanted to show you that as well, uh, I guess. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about certified partners. Um, um, yeah, and there's a question actually from, uh, Ivan, uh, what's the, um, I'm, I'm reading it real quick. What's your short phrase or sentence description of the mission of Starshot? I've seen the long blurbs on the pages, but I wonder if you could speak to a vision, uh, we are all working towards. Yeah. Let me maybe talk a little bit about that because we actually did craft a mission statement and I'll show that to you in the next meeting. I think it's going to be next week. Uh, we reviewed that and tweaked that with the core committers. Um, and there's a few things to unpack, and I kind of flashed it in the Dries note. Um, so we'll go into that in more detail next week. But I think in short, um, it's really, Starshot is really meant to be 
two things for me. One is a new default version of Drupal um, that has a great out-of-the-box experience and that is targeted towards uh, what I call ambitious site builders, which is a combination of low-code site builders as well as junior developers. Um, I, I recognize that that is not really capturing the things that Starshot does, so to speak, out of the box, and we need to define that. But it's really kind of a big deal because in, in 23 or 24 years of Drupal, we've never had kind of a second official version of Drupal. And this will be a second version of people that, pe that people can download with a real focus on creating an amazing out-of-the-box experience uh, for site builders. The second element of that is that we are going to take the opportunity to rethink how we build Starshot and how we innovate. So that will allow us to explore um, different governance model uh, than we have uh, for Drupal core. And it will allow us to bring new people and talent into Drupal as well as in leadership roles. Um, so there is an, there is a, there is a product element to Starshot, but there is also an innovation element to Starshot. Um, and I recognize that we're not really talking much about what it is and all these things and that we have to do that. But if you look at the calendar, um, you can see that the meeting, our next meeting will be a lot about product. And we're gonna talk a little bit about our mission statement, um, sort of design criteria. So we're gonna talk to you about wireframes, uh, next milestones, hopefully a little bit of scope definition and touch upon the things that are in the critical path to success uh, and a little bit about strategy, product strategy and next step as well. So uh, so again, this meeting is really meant to catch you up on activities that we've been working on and how we're going to activate you and other people in the community. And then uh, in the next meeting, we're going to get more into the product details, I would say. So hopefully... I thought it was a good question to tackle because um, I don't know if you come in here in this meeting and you don't really know what Starshot is, maybe you would have felt uh, completely lost and hopefully now you feel a little bit less lost. Um, all right, so I'm gonna keep chugging along here for a minute, um, trying to pay some attention to the questions. Uh, and actually there is a question around AI uh, from Mikal, I think it's pronounced. And so that that's maybe worth tackling as well, because I think for Starshot, we want to, um, I, I think it also gives an, us an opportunity to explore some, I call it green fields. I don't know if that's an intuitive term, but it allows us to think about what are some like really exciting innovations in the world, maybe like AI, you know, responsible AI, but there might be other things that we could put into a uh, default download of Drupal and really expose uh, the world to some, um, you know, really nice modern innovation, if you will. And in a way also allows us to compete better because uh, some of our competitors have AI out of the box and Drupal obviously doesn't have AI out of the box. So we can even explore things like that where we can add like really state-of-the-art innovations into Drupal and, and, and make um, new users experience that out of the box as well. AI is a candidate, obviously, given everything that's going on in AI, um, but there might be other uh, candidates as well. So should be pretty exciting. Um, all right, so certified partner update as well. So a lot of agency owners have actually emailed me and I've had meetings with um, a number of them just in the last few weeks or offering to get involved, they want to get involved. You might find yourself in the same situ situation, uh, which is great. And so we want to also help agencies get involved. Uh, and so we actually had a call um, earlier this week. Um, I marked it in italic because it wasn't public, so to speak. It was a call for agency uh, partners that have a relationship with the with the Drupal Association today um, to preview some ideas on how they get 
can get involved uh, with Starshot. So we essentially are putting together kind of uh, packages where agency owners can either contribute staff resources, you know, time of people, uh, talent and time, or they can make financial contribution. There will be two kinds of financial contributions, most likely. One is what we're calling endowment uh, contributions, where you can make a larger contribution and that money would go towards um, fulfilling a number of full-time roles. Like one example could be a documentation lead. Like we feel like we need to make an investment in improving Drupal's documentation overall, but also specifically we'll need a lot of great documentation for uh, Starshot. And like we might be able to say something like we want to hire somebody for 18 months full time. And that person can then work on improving existing documentation um, as well as helping with Starshot documentation. Well, to hire somebody for 18 months, we need, uh, you know, we need funds, right? Whether it's $100,000, whether it's $150,000, I don't know the number. Uh, but the idea is that we would try and raise that money. And once we have uh, raised the money, we would then go ahead and, uh, you know, recruit a full-time person, a full-time contributor in that specific role. So we presented some of these ideas uh, to the agency um, leaders. Uh, there will also be a, kind of an innovation fund. And if you make a contribution to that fund, uh, those resources could also be used uh, towards uh, Starshot. So um, in exchange for these things, um, we are essentially um, proposing certain marketing benefits, but also uh, potentially certain credits uh, using the Drupal.org credit system so that they gain visibility in the uh, marketplace. So we, we run these ideas by them. I think it was well received. We have some more work to do, um, but uh, you should expect uh, something like that um, to come. And then for those agency owners that wanna contribute, we're thinking about creating work packages. Think of it as a laundry list of items to get involved in. Um, and these could be contributions to Drupal core on which Starshot is built, but it could also be work packages related to contributed modules that play a key role in Starshot. And then hopefully some of the agencies would be willing to take on a work, pack, a work package like that. We don't have these work packages today, but that's something that we would create. And if you you know, where to look at this engagement calendar. One of the things I would like to show is by Barcelona is that we have a number of certified partners step up, so to speak, and make a contribution to Starshots and that we can actually demonstrate like, hey, um, you know, these certified partners, they have actually meaningfully help, helped fund uh, a key building block of Starshots, such as certain contributed modules. All right, so we've done a lot of work on trying to kick that off uh, with the Drupal Association. So let's see if there's a question on that. Uh, yeah, Kristen? Yeah, so I, I was at that meeting and um, I asked a lot of questions there and, I, and afterwards I started thinking, I'm like, oh, I have more questions. So um, right. a couple little things and we don't have to get into the weeds, but um, one idea was um, for smaller agencies, could they co-sponsor someone? Um, maybe, you know, maybe they don't have the funds to, uh, you know, have someone full time or maybe even not even half time, but maybe they can, you know, pull their funds together and, and sponsor. So that was one question. And the other thing was um, the credits were, um, you know, proportional to how many people you know, that you sponsored and, and all that. Um, but uh, so for the sponsorship levels, the, the money sponsorship now with DCPs, um, it's proportional to, this, to the size of the organization. 
but that's not true with this sort of um, model of hiring someone. So like Acquia is going to fund you know, 15 people. Um, so that's, you know, 1% of Acquia or whatever. Um, but if an agency has four people or 10 people, you know, hiring one person, that's a big chunk of their team, right? So I think right. thinking through that a little bit. Yeah, I think... Yeah, these are all great questions, first of all. Um, Co-sponsorship should definitely be an option because not everybody can, um, you know, maybe sponsor um, a full-time person or sponsor an entire initiative. So being able to work together on something seems key. Um, hold on, there's a little bit of background noise. I don't know, Leah, if you could help with that or not. Yeah. Ajit, people could go on mute. Ajit, can you mute yourself, please? Is it Ajit? Okay. Thank you. Um, we always love kid, kid noises on Zooms, but... Um... <laughs> All right. Thanks for that. Um, so yeah, co-sponsorship is good um, and important, I think. Um, and it's true that different organizations are different sizes and they have different means of being able to give. Um, there's even very large organizations that have a limited Drupal practice, as an example. So even that is something that maybe needs to be looked at. So, so I guess yes to these things, Kristen, and and details to be worked out. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Um, I'm gonna maybe bring us forward to the governance, as well. Uh, let me scroll real quick because there, there's a lot of activity in chat and I can't quite uh, keep up while talking. Um, oh, yeah, Betty is saying that we sent out a survey to the uh, certified partners, and that was a follow-up from the meeting that we had. And in the survey, we're asking them for more details on how they might be able to help and get some feedback, these kinds of things. So um, if you are a certified partner, check your inbox for the survey. Uh, hopefully we can report back on that in one of these meetings as well. Um, uh, sorry, scanning really quickly. Um, all right, a lot of product questions, which is great. Um, maybe one question from Ben Peter Matthew um, is about content marketing. Um, what kind of content do we need and these kinds of things. So that, that's maybe a good question because I think it does tie back to a contribution and potentially um, certified partner contribution as well. But so as I try to get across in the Dries node is like what we wanted to do is we want to like ignite Drupal, you know, <laughs> and, and Starshot is one element of that to a product lens, like let's make a great version of Drupal that's easy to use that people fall in love with out of the box. But as I explained in the Dries notes, uh, you know, marketing is as important as um, just having a great product. And so we actually laid a foundation of marketing six months or, well, we've been doing marketing of course for a long time, but like six or so months ago, we created a, uh, marketing working group at the Drupal Association. And we started creating a marketing plan, which they did. Um, and now the Drupal Association is even going to hire sort of a head of marketing person to help kind of with the marketing of Drupal. And obviously a person single-handedly can't you know, market Drupal, but that will probably be an organizing role to help a lot of people with marketing or to help people help us with marketing. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, uh, marketing is gonna be a key part of this. And it's also obviously an area where a lot of the Drupal agencies have a lot of experience. And when I say marketing, I say marketing in the broad sense. So obviously there's content creation, uh, but there's also work on branding, uh, positioning, messaging, uh, event organizing. These are all important elements of marketing. And we will welcome all these kinds of contributions as well. In terms of content marketing specifically, because I think that was um, 
that was Ben Peter Matthews question. Um, you know, we actually, as part of the marketing plan that we created, we explicitly set a goal to market beyond the audiences that we have been marketing to primarily today. And so they've actually written some uh, positioning um, guidelines to how to talk to content marketers specifically, which historically has maybe not been a key audience for our messages, right? We've been primarily focused on marketing to developers, I would say, and IT people, maybe more broadly. Um, and uh, again, I think I mentioned this in the Dries note as well, but we actually applied to have a booth at, I think it's the largest content marketing conference in the world. Uh, we don't know if we were accepted yet, uh, but it's a good example of how we want to take Drupal, and this will be a Drupal booth, not a Drupal company booth, if you will, but like a, sort of a community-focused Drupal booth, uh, just like we had at Web Summit, we hope to have at events like content marketing events. Uh, and so we will need a lot of different content, um, content that we maybe don't have uh, in spades today, uh, and we'll have to explain to the world once we have figured out what exactly Starshot is, which I recognize we still have to do, uh, we'll have to explain to the world why that's great and what the benefits are of Starshot relative to uh, competitors of uh, Starshot as well. So I know that's maybe a little bit of topic, but marketing will be a big piece of this too. Uh, and we recognize that we need to help organize it as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring us to the governance, if that's okay, and uh, maybe skip over some of the product-related comments. Um, and, and maybe I'll, I'll scan these later. I'm happy to try and answer. I just want to make sure we get through the agenda. Um, so you can probably tell, like, doing a lot of work with Laurie and Gabor um, and, and a couple of others have been in sync with the Drupal Association all along as well. Um, but we have some big questions and like you're asking some of the big questions in chat <laughs> and actually also on the Zoom call in, in words, I guess. Um, and questions like what is going to be in Starshot? Like, you know, what are, is, is AI going to be in it? Is it not going to be in it? These kinds of things. Uh, what are the next milestones? And even though I penciled in some milestones, like how are we actually going to decide on the specifics of it? All right. And so really... Step one was let's bring the community up to speed, which we're starting to do with these meetings. And step two is build a leadership team that can make a lot of these decisions on these questions, right? Once we have the leadership team, we can now as a team start answering questions like what is in Starshot and what is not. And so um, the last couple of weeks, I've also been working a lot on the governance of Starshot. And so that's what I want to, update you on uh, today. And so like there is a, a mat, there is like a, a sequence to the madness, if you will, right? Like if you don't have the team, you can't really decide what it's going to be as a team. <laughs> and, and until we can decide what it's going to be, we can actually put forward plans of how we're going to build what it is going to be, right? And so again, I'm repeating myself a little bit, but I'm hope hopeful it's somewhat useful. It's like, all right, we came back from DrupalCon, Things have ex had exploded in a good way. We're trying to organize everything, <laughs> uh, put in place a plan to activate the community on the things that we know we need to do because the calendar is all about the things we know we need to do. There's a lot of things that we don't know yet. In order to define that, we need a team. Once we have the team, we can start working on those things. But in the meantime, we can get people active and involved with things like recipes and project browser and all of those things. So that's a little bit the summary of what I've said so far. So on the governance, so we also um, worked on um, a governance, all right? So, and again, I apologize for not having slides and I, I warned you in the beginning, I'm gonna be jumping around a little bit and show you working documents, but in a way that's maybe also reflective of where we are. <laughs> Like we have a lot of working documents and a lot of things in progress. Uh, so let me walk you through this. Um, so we brainstormed some principles. And again, I'll go relatively fast. I can't and won't read every sentence to you because I would be very tedious. Um, but we started with some 
principles, like how do we want to make decisions? And we said, well, we want it to be fast and effective. We don't want it to be more complex. Um, we also said, we want to be true to the goals and the personas that we already have defined. And again, I'll, I'll show those again next meeting, but we did spend a lot of time brainstorming metrics for success. We did spend a lot of time with the core committers brainstorming our target personas. And so whatever we decide needs to be in function of these goals and, and, and persona. Um, but we also recognize we can have different decision-making models uh, for different scenarios. And in general, we want to empower a large, a relatively large pool of committers to make decisions fairly rapidly. All right. And we want to start fluid and simple. And then as needed, we might kind of formalize things later. So there is an element of like, let's go fast and let's be fluid and simple. There might be better words for that, but, um, and only when needed, we will tighten up um, maybe our processes. Um, and obviously Starshot will be built on top of Drupal core. Um, it's not a fork, just to be really clear. It's built on top uh, in, you know, synergy. <laughs> I don't like using that word, but like <laughs> it's a sim symbiotic relationship with core, uh, but it also needs to be governed separately from core. Like it's a separate team of people that's going to run with this. Um, all right. And then we want everything to be open uh, and published publicly. And I know a lot of the documents I'm showing you aren't open <laughs> and published publicly right now, but it's because we needed to organize ourselves. But going forward, our intent is to move, once we're organized, move everything to the open. All right. So at the same time, we're going to establish a small core leadership team. And there's five roles, I'll walk you through them, that we have identified as critical and it's that small team that's going to help build a larger team, okay? Um, and a principle that we defined is that the leadership team should focus on one-door decisions and the committers, a pool of lar a relatively large pool of committers can focus on two-way door decisions. You might not know what that is. So I may have to explain that real quick, but it's a term that we've been using. It actually comes from Amazon, uh, Jeff Bezos introduced this concept, and the idea is um, every decision you make, you ask yourself, is it a one-door or two-way door decision? And basically, a one-door, a one-way door decision means you go through the door, the door closes behind you, you can't go back, you know? And so it's a decision that is very hard to undo. And the principle is those decisions, you need to have a long, hard think <laughs> about what you're going to do because the consequences of deciding are huge. Uh, but a two-way door decision is essentially a reversible decision. Like you decide something, turn out to be a bad idea, no problem. You roll it back. You undo the decision. Not every decision is easy to undo. You can probably think of uh, two-way door decisions in your life and one-way door decisions in your life. Um and the same idea will apply here. The leadership team, I'll talk about that in the next minutes. They're gonna be focused on kind of the big one door decisions and then enabling a pool of committers and other, when I say committers, I should really see say contributors at large um, to make a lot of two way door decisions. I'm also gonna be talking to you in a minute about the notion of a advisory board. Um, and the goal of the advisory board is to provide a broader perspective, but also to tighten up some collabor collaboration and alignment between different teams that we have in Drupal, okay? So let me walk you through these things. Um, and again, I won't read all of these, um, but there's five key leadership roles. One is a product lead. Um, we believe that needs to be a full-time person available for at least the next six months to really help us figure out um, you know, what is Starshot? What does success look like? Um, really understands the end users and the market, uh, these kinds of things. A technical lead um, that oversees uh, the technical decisions, make sure the product is technically sound, and also really build a team of committers 
uh, that can contribute codes and to star shots. Uh, also coordinate with the Drupal core committer team because of dependencies, like Starshot will be using features that are being built in core, as an example. And we might build certain features in Starshot that may eventually end up in core. Like So there's going to be a lot of coordination between core and Starshot, but also potentially between Starshot and contributed modules. And so the technical lead, the idea is that um, that person would help oversee these things. We also think it needs to be full-time for now because we want to go fast in the next eight months. Um, and then user experience, we want to elevate um, a user experience role to be like a core part of the leadership team, which um, I think is right because of the emphasis we're putting on um, the, ease, the ease of use um, for our persona and the out of the box experience for our persona. Um, so again, I won't read all the bullets here. Uh, point is we've written job descriptions and we have kind of an idea of what, what we need. A product owner, um, person that can help, um, you know, taking the big ideas and translating them to issues and tickets, if you will, and a backlog and uh, identifies blockers. There's a, a big project management piece to this. Um, yeah, and basically helps us make progress. And then a contribution coordinator as well, which is we have so many people willing and eager to contribute. Like I think it's going to be somebody's job essentially to, you know, help with that and help with the communication. We have a lot of um, excited people, as you saw from uh, the one words, uh, you know, question. Uh, that I gave in the beginning of the call, but we also have confused people right now. People want to get involved, but they don't know how to get involved uh, or they're wondering what's going on and what's happening. And I think it's normal, especially at this stage of the project. Uh, but <clears throat> we're going to have to focus a lot on, you know, communication in every sense, you know, presentations, frequently asked questions, blog posts, all kinds of things. So, um, we have assembled um, that initial team of people, uh, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but then there's also this notion of the advisory board. Uh, and I'll, let me talk to you a little bit about that. And uh, This is still a little bit in flux, although I feel pretty good about it, but we hope to have, um, if you go back to the action items, um, I, I know I didn't walk you through it, but. Uh, a plan is to have the first advisory board meeting basically in two weeks, you know? So it's pretty aggressive um, uh, from that sense. Um, but the idea is we have some end users in the advisory board. So people that would actually use a product because <laughs> um, I think that's important. Um, I also would like to add three certified Drupal partners and I would ask the Drupal Association to identify them. I think that's important because a lot of organizations make a living with Drupal and we want to make sure that they have a voice uh, as well in, in the in the future of Starshot. Um, two core committers, and I already explained that uh, it will have a different governance model from core, but we do have to be really tight, if you will, with the core committer team in coordination. And so having two core committers on the advisory board uh, I'm, by the way, I'm thinking of calling it the Starshot Council. I was trying to find a slightly cuter name than advisory boards, but we'll see which name we'll go with. Mission Control, yeah, not a bad name, David. Um, keep, keep the creativity there. Um, so I think we want to have that. Um, and then three of the Drupal Association, three Drupal Association board members. And you might not know... I don't know how much you know about the Drupal Association board, but uh, we actually have working groups, committees, and we have an innovation committee. We have a marketing committee, which I mentioned, and we have a fundraising committee. And the reason I would like a member of each committee to be on the board is to help close uh, communication gaps. Like, for example, I want the fundraising committee to know what are the fundraising gaps that we have. So hopefully they can help, you know, with the fundraising. I want 
the marketing committee to be like, hey, we should be doing marketing <laughs> or we should be doing press releases. And can we like, I, I want to, again, connect uh, different people in leadership roles across the Drupal um, world, so to speak, and like, and, and have information flow more naturally. And same thing, we have an innovation committee. And the innovation committee is often thinking about the innovation tools and GitLab and all of these things as well. And so I think having those three board members at the table will help us, um, will help us as well. And then two staff members of the Drupal Association, because obviously the Drupal Association helps uh, manage a lot of um, our infrastructure and uh, these kinds of things. And then I guess they're not really on the board, but the leadership team of five would also be in these meetings. So it is, I don't know what that is, like 16, is that right? I can't count this quickly in front of 100 or 200 people. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say 16 and hope that's right. Um but the idea is we would meet at least for 90 minutes every month. And so between now and Barcelona we would have four um meetings and the leadership team would essentially present updates, maybe a little bit like what I'm doing here and then really get feedback from from this council. And obviously there will be many other opportunities for feedback and we'll have these sessions as well, but I just wanted to put something in place that is slightly more official, so to speak. And, and that also, uh, I think enables people, um, again, invites new leaders to join, you know? Um, so we haven't figured that out yet, uh, who all these people are, um, but we will hopefully in the next few years, if you, are interested if you consider yourself an end user, for example, feel free to raise your hand or shoot me an email um, and we will definitely consider you. So that's a little bit the I, overall concepts, right? The principles, the five key leaders, and then the council. And in the spirit of the principles, we'll see how that goes and adjust as needed. We might learn that we have a need for additional people. We might learn all kinds of things. We're going to keep it fluid, um, as I said. All right, so I've then reached out to uh, different people that could be on the initial leadership team. And um, I'm going to show that to you next, all right? So um, I have been acting as a product lead uh, for Starshot. I helped kick it off, and I will continue to do that role. Uh, for the time being, at some point, I hope to replace myself as a product lead. Uh, but I think in the interest of keeping up the momentum, um, I think it makes sense that I keep going. Uh, and I'm excited to keep going. Uh, also, I mentioned this. Um, you know, there's a question about the WordPress tab. <laughs> um, I will, or maybe I'll, I'll tell you what that is in a second. Um, I'll, I'll leave that to the very end. Um, so yeah, I will continue in that role, uh, with, with a longer term plan to replace myself as a star shot product elite, uh, Tim Plunkett, um, long-term contributor to Drupal, uh, has agreed to be the technical lead, Christina, um, she works at Lullabot, will be the user experience lead. I think most of you might know Christina, she's been doing amazing work in the last year, uh, or not just the last year, but really stepped it up in the last year, I would say. Um, Pam will be the product owner. She thinks she lives in Australia. Uh, I forgot the name of the company that she's working for right now. I apologize. Uh, but she has accepted the role of product owner. And then Gabor um, will be the contribution coordinator. And then, as I said, we'll have a, a big team of committers that we still need to empower, but that will be uh, one of the key roles of Tim. We may change this leadership team, by the way. This might not be something that we keep running with for the next year. We might swap out leaders. Uh, I just needed to get an initial team of great people to get us out of the gate, given the, uh, you know, not that many days to launch. Uh, what was it? 220 or so, 214. <laughs> um, so um, we have no time to lose and, and I'm going to make 
an announcement. I'm going to announce these people officially probably early next week. Um, we have a separate document where we're flushing out the, the advisory boards um, in, in more. Uh, and similarly, Lori um, will be spearheading the um, experience builder. And uh, Lori, I mean, effectively, he has been. Like he's been spending the last, I don't even know, Lori, uh, six months or so pretty much full time talking to agencies and users, creating wireframes. So he's, a, he's effectively been running with um, Next Generation Page Builder Initiative, which we renamed to the Experience Builder Initiative. And he's actively recruiting uh, people as well. Uh, Wim um, is acting as a technical lead. He's already done two blog posts, I think, on his progress. Uh, one came out today, which I haven't read. Um, and yeah, Laurie's still looking for uh, additional people. So Experience Builder is a big initiative on its own. It's kind of a big uh, part of Starshot. I would maybe say it's the more complex piece, actually, <laughs> um, in a way. Um, and so I'm very, very excited and lucky to have these people uh, be on the initial team. Um, and I think we'll be able to accelerate um, yeah, our progress. All right. Um, I think that's kind of what I wanted to cover. Uh, I know we're kind of short on time. I do I do want to show maybe the WordPress playgrounds because <laughs> I was uh, people are like, why does Dries have a WordPress tab? Um, but one idea that I mentioned in the Dries node is um, is to have a trial experience, and I think actually the Drupal project started this. I, I might be off on my history, but basically, um, you know, what this does is um, it basically runs WordPress in the browser using WebAssembly, uh, which is pretty cool. So it, it compiles WordPress or Drupal into Wasm WebAssembly, and it can then completely, including embedding a, a SQLite database, I think, in the browser. So it's like, Basically, there is no backend servers here. You can literally create a WordPress site in the browser without having to install Apache or Nginx or without having to install MySQL. You can literally just kind of play it. And we've been thinking about, oh, this could be cool uh, for, for Starshot and Drupal as well. And I think Drupal started it and then the WordPress uh, team picked it up and actually launched it before us. And uh, I know some people like Matt Clemen, uh, who you might know from all kinds of things. Uh, PHP Stan, his book has actually been dabbling with this and uh, I think has it kind of almost close to working. So we might have uh, that part figured out too. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause here because we only have a few minutes left. Um, I'm happy to take some questions. Um, I'm also going to scroll back up in the chat, which I've not been able to read. Um, There's a few questions in the Q&A. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, boom. Where is that Q&A? Oh, there we go. Yep. Um, okay, so first question is, what's your vision around how Starshot is different from Umami? So Umami is really a demo of what you can do with Drupal using the capabilities that are just in Drupal core, right? Uh, a big part of Starshot is going to be uh, to use the recipes initiative and project browser to pull in contributed modules. And so we'll be able to do way more than what Umami can do in terms of, um, of features. Uh, and Starshot also won't necessarily be a demo experience. It will actually be uh, something that people can use to build a production site. So um, it's a great question. I'll answer it very briefly today and we'll go into more detail next week in the product uh, meeting. Um, do we have a date from when we are looking to actively start the work? We expect committed time from partners so they can plan allocations. Um, that's a great question. Um, we, like next week, um, we're going to do, I think, a good amount of product planning so we can activate 
uh, partners and individuals on specific things. I mean, you can get involved today if you know your way around uh, with initiatives like recipe, project browser, um, automatic updates, these kinds of things. But the next big step now that we have that leadership team is to help uh, people get started. And to do that, we need to tell them what to work on, what's missing, all of these things. So that's that's coming. Um, so, um, all right, let's see. Uh, does the DA plan on funding smaller efforts? Yes, uh, is the answer. Um, the innovation fund that I briefly mentioned uh, would help with that. Um, I'm, I'm, are we planning on engaging or have we heard about interest from universities? Um, we don't have any formal plans right now to engage universities, but I will tell you uh, maybe a fun anecdote. Um, like one of the core committers, um, you know, Ben, uh, and I, I hope he's okay with me telling this, but he works, uh, I guess, part-time at Acquia, uh, but we pay, Acquia pays him. Uh, we pay him to be a, a core committer, uh, but he's also partially uh, a, a tutor. He teaches at a university. Um, he teaches React, you know, not Drupal, React. Uh, but he's, one of his dreams is to actually teach Drupal at the university. And his challenge is it takes too long to get up and running with Drupal. So by the time his students are actually up and running, um, like half the, half the whatever it is, you know, trimester, si semester uh, is over. And so he is super excited about Starshot because it's going to be so focused on the out-of-the-box experience and getting people up and running very quickly uh, with recipes that he believes once we have Starshot, he'll be able to put together a course on Drupal using Starshot. And at DrupalCon, after my Dries notes, I was approached by another gentleman that is uh, teaching Drupal to underrepresented groups. And he was like, yeah, it's really hard. Uh, because it takes so long to get Drupal to a state where I can actually do productive teaching and, and have the students build something useful. And he was super excited about Starshot, essentially for the exact same reason that Ben was. And so I think Starshot, while we don't have a plan to reach out to universities, I think Starshot might give us a license to re-engage with uh, universities and, and tutors to help them get um, started with Drupal. So, um, uh, budget hosting, uh, you know, I don't know. It, I, I imagine the ecosystem of hosters will offer Starshot hosting. Um, you know, right now there is no plan to make that necessarily cheaper because technically Starshot is Drupal plus contributed modules. Um, I do think Starshot will allow us to go a bit down market because it will reduce uh, cost of ownership of Drupal and, and build time. So maybe that will be natural uh, to get into lower end hosting solutions as well, which I think would be great uh, personally for Drupal. So, um, all right, there's a lot of questions now flowing in, which is great. Um, <laughs> um, from your deep knowledge of the DXP space, how will Starshot fit differently or will fit in that ecosystem? Are we competing with non-CMS solutions with Starshot? So, all right, that's a great question. It's probably not a, a short answer, but like, how about I take that question to next week in depth, but like in short, I think uh, recipes and project browser will make it easier for uh, people and organizations to build um, kind of DXP style applications. Like a DXP is typically a CMS like Drupal plus things like email marketing or e-commerce journey orchestration. Like it's basically like an integrated marketing technology stack with content often at the core. And if you think about sort of CMS plus integrations, um, I think that's just going to be a lot easier with something like Starshot where we can have recipes. So I think it will make us more competitive, but probably can give you a much better, longer answer given more time. Um, uh, how to apply for the advisory board? Yeah, I would say uh, email me, which is uh, trees at uh, 
Batart, which I'm sure nobody can spell without looking it up, .net. But it's first name at last name, .net. If you go to my personal blog, I actually put my email addresses on my about page. Uh, I can probably also type it in chat or somebody can type it in chat. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested, um, you know, here's my email address. Uh, and I will connect you to the right people. Um, gosh, I haven't kept up with Slack uh, chat at all. Um, so I recognize we're at time and I, I, I won't be offended if people drop off, but I'm happy to keep going a little bit as well. Um, so I'll do that. Um, all right, so... I'm reading now. Andre taught Drupal to high school students in Mexico. That's amazing, Andre. We also share the same name. Dries is short for Andre or Andrew. Um, and yeah, so Andre is recognizing that's a lot of work to get students up and running. And so, yeah, Starshot. Starshot for the win will help. Um, Kristen. Uh, writes, we did talk about different flavors of Starshot. Yes, uh, that is true. So maybe it's worth me talking a little bit about. Uh, but like step one for me is to just ship a version of Drupal with, you know, frankly, hard-coded recipes out of the box. You know, that would be great step one. And those hard-coded recipes can pull in contributed modules and themes and those kinds of things. But the longer-term vision is really to have a marketplace of recipes. Um, and that would allow us to have different flavors of Starshot. And so think about, well, and, and maybe this is clear to all of you, maybe it's not, but what we're really trying to do is we have these big initiatives that have been underway for some time and we're trying to bring them together such that, no pun intended, the stars align. Um, and so what that means is we wanna take recipes we want to take project browser and we want to take automatic updates and some of the scaffolding that sits below it, like the package manager, uh, to really revolutionize kind of how you use Drupal. Um, and so like what we want to do really is change the Drupal installer. So like when you install Drupal, uh, very quickly, we'll actually show you recipes to, to choose from um, that you can install. And these recipes will essentially pull in contributed modules and configuration and documentation and things like that um, and, and make it very easy. And that actually eliminates so many steps for people, right? Right now you install Drupal, you have this blank canvas, you need to now go figure out which modules you need to do something simple. There's a huge drop off there, like for people to even discover something like Pat Auto that all of us know, probably most people don't know, and they have to go learn about all these things. So we can make that a lot easier. But then also, basically, as part of the installer, sort of like drop them into Project Browser, which is our equivalent of the App Store, where they can discover additional things. And that's our flavors of. Starshot could come in. We could have special recipes for uh, governments and higher education and those kinds of things. We can even have uh, company-specific recipes. Imagine you're a large organization and you have 200 sites. You may have your own best practices as an organization, and you can you can bring them into an installer experience so that maybe your employees, when they spin up the next site, they can uh, select... Um, sort of internal uh, recipes. And that could apply to universities and maybe comes with out of the box branding for that university, you know, like somebody already thought about <laughs> the right branding uh, for features or maybe these recipes have been certified by the organization. Maybe there's a security uh, and compliance uh, team within uh, set organizations and they just want to make sure that whatever people install has their stamp of approval. So that could even be bundled up in uh, in recipes that could be made available in Starshot. 
So that is where we want to get to. But step one for me is keep it simple. Let's build an amazing installer experience where people can select from a dozen or so uh, carefully crafted recipes for common tasks for our persona. And then let's open up the floodgates for how people in the community can contribute additional recipes. So that's kind of maybe a long answer um, to a simple statement from Kristen. Um, what else here? Feel free to raise your hand too if you want to ask a question on the recording. Um, Drew, there are some more questions back in the Q&A again, if that's... All right. Let me switch over. Thank you, Tim. I didn't know you were here. Nice. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I ran a little late getting started, but yep. No, no problem. Um, all right. So a question from Amant, if I say that right. Do we envision um, work for core uh, JavaScript developers, uh, possibly something with experienced builders? I don't know if Laurie is still on. And that would be a great question for Laurie. Not sure. They might have dropped off because we are yeah. over time. I think he had to drop. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, I mean, I think um, let's come back to that as well because um, I, I do think we, we're going to need a lot of front-end experience to make Experience Builder successful. Uh, and we might have to use a lot more JavaScript than what we do today, but I want to leave that up to Laurie and Wim as sort of the product lead and technical lead for experience builders to maybe elaborate on. Um, all right. So Nora's question, I think I answered. Uh, Paul's question is what I see next, which is you mentioned the current hosting ecosystem. Currently the hosting ecosystem seems to be aiming more and more for high-end enterprise clients, raising prices, eliminating incentive incentives for smaller agencies, et cetera. Would, will Acquia consider a lower priced offering to attract smaller sites uh, using Starshot? And I would say yes. And uh, I hope others will too. You know, I think, um, I think Starshot will be really good for both the low end and the high end of the market. Um, I can talk a little bit about Acquia. If you allow me to put my Acquia hat on. Acquia hat on for a second. And obviously we focus on the enterprise, but we are pretty diligent about uh, tracking what we call win-loss reviews. So when a customer leaves Drupal, we try to capture why they leave. Or if we're in a competitive situation where we're competing against competitors, <laughs> we all, and they choose not to go with Drupal, or uh, we also track why. And I can tell you that um, Starshot will help resolve some of these things uh, because the reasons are often I need too many engineers, uh, the total cost of building the Drupal site is too high. And so Starshot and recipes will really help with that. Um, but maybe more excitingly, I think, while it is good for the high ends, I'm, I'm firmly, I believe that very firmly, I think it's going to be even better for the low end of the markets, which I think is great because it's how we can get more people into Drupal, right? Um, and then we can, over time, make them uh, more senior Drupal developers and contributors and all of these things. So I think that's that's a big part of the opportunity and and making Drupal easier to install and, and, and use is a big part of that, but having lower, host, lower priced hosting, I think is another part of that. So I would love to see, um, you know, lower priced offerings there. I don't know what it would take to make that happen right now, but I would love to make that happen. Um, so Nora asks, are you planning on publishing the roles needed? Uh, the answer is yes. So I think the next step is we need to define what Starshot is, what we need to build uh, for each of the things that we want to build. I think we want to write up a little bit of a, like a scope so to speak, of what it is, who it is for, and then what skill sets are we looking for to help build it and see if we can recruit uh, people to help with it. So we're going to we're gonna have to do that. And then hopefully volunteer contributors can jump on it or we will work with 
the Drupal Association and the certified partners to with to do matchmaking as well. Um, all right. Um, are we planning to support Drupal Commerce as well? I think it's a great question. It's the exactly the kind of thing that we could put in a recipe uh, to make it easier to in commerce enable uh, your site. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be an out of the box package. Uh, most likely not in phase one, but in the future, it could be a great recipe to consider. Um, um, all right. Do you worry that the market in the market initiative will work pressify Drupal? Uh, a lot of paid plugins that are very expensive. I'm not worried about that. We don't have any paid plugins, I think, today, and we don't allow them on Drupal.org. Uh, at least not in the way that WordPress allows them or used to allow them. So I'm not worried about that. Um, Mike asks, good to see you, Mike. Um, is access accessibility going to be built into Starshot? I would assume so, but it's is is this an area where this is an area where I haven't heard a clear answer? Yeah, and I think we need to we need to define an accessibility um, policy. I think for Starshot, um, I don't think we've defined it. Well, we haven't defined it. Um, I do think it will help. So I I think what will happen with the out of the box Starshot recipes that will rely on contributed modules. I think it will naturally raise the bar for these modules. Um, and hopefully that will lead to better accessibility as well, right? So like the modules that are gonna be promoted because we are going to be opinionated about what goes into Starshot and what doesn't, at least initially, um, it will like elevate the profile of certain modules. And I think um, I'm proud of the fact that Drupal is accessible and I'm proud of the fact that we continue to work hard on making it more and more accessible. Uh, so I'd love to see sort of the accessibility of Drupal extend into official recipes promoted by Starshot. The mechanics and the exact details of that we don't have, but yeah, I think accessibility is really important and I think aligned with our values as a as a project. So not not planning on giving up on that for sure. Um, all right. Um so will there be a separate base for Starshot and Drupal Core? Um we talked a little bit about this. Um you know, will it you know, will it be like recipes that ship with the core or will it be completely separate? install like git repo if you want to think about it that way um, i think maybe initially it will be two different git repos because that will allow us to move faster but maybe in the future they come back together uh, but that's really how we store the code so to speak or manage the code i think from an end user point of view there will be two things even if it's all in one git repo potentially there will be two different downloads so in the minds of most users, there are only two different things. How it's managed under the hood, for now, definitely two code bases. In the future, maybe one code base. But that is to be determined. Um, uh, all right. Deepak Dries talked about the launch from browser experience. Looks, uh, looks like at the moment we're focusing on launch for demo. Uh, do we see a future for launch for production experience? I mean, I think these are all great ideas. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think that's something to consider. Like, honestly, we have a try Drupal experience today on Drupal.org, and it's not a great one. And it's essentially a try hosting experience because you, you get launched into like Acquia Cloud or Pantheon or any of the other um, hosting platforms. And it's not really allow. I mean, it, I guess it allows people to try Drupal, but it's not focused on, um, on that per se. It's maybe more focused on trying the hosting platform. So it can be a bit jarring, I think. If imagine you're a marketer or a content creator, like you want nothing to do with hosting. You know what I mean? 
you want to see how you can create content in Drupal and how easy it is to publish content in Drupal. So I think we need to get to a state a little bit like what Deepak describes, where there's a try Drupal experience and a try Starshot experience, but also maybe a try hosting experience, which is also very important. Don't get me wrong, but they're kind of two different things for two different people, you know? One is for content creators and marketers. The other experience is maybe more for developers and, op and ops people. So I think being clear about that, I think will serve as well, because again, a marketer that gets launched into a hosting experience will be like, what? I thought I was gonna test the CMS <laughs> and I have to configure you know, DNS records and CDNs. Um, so anyway, uh, it's what we have today, but I think the opportunity is to evolve it in the best interest of our end users. Um, so, um, all right. Uh, how can you get involved, Shani? Like, uh, sign up again. If you missed the beginning, I would say go to drupal.org slash starshot here. And there is a calendar with meetings. You can get involved by joining these meetings. This meeting was about governance and funding, but we're going to get into a lot more details about aspects of the project. You can get involved with those. We also have a Slack channel on Drupal Slack. It's a hashtag Starshot. Um, that's one way to get involved. We started tagging issues with uh, the tag Starshot blocker. So you can, if you want to, find issues to work on as a developer. You can go to the issue queue as well and start looking for things tagged with either Starshot or Starshot blocker. Uh, so these are all ways you can get involved. And then we recognize we need to do a lot more to help people get involved, which is what these meetings are about and, well, and other things that we'll do in the future. Um, all right. Um, do you think users will prefer Starshot more than Drupal core? I think the answer is yes, but also it depends. Um, I think, so we'll have two versions of Drupal, Drupal CMS or Drupal Starshot, which will be, I think, more broadly appealing because it's focused on a larger audience, the audience of site builders. Um, but we're not taking away Drupal core. And Drupal core, I think, will continue to be very appealing and important for maybe more experts that know what they want to do and they have their own preferred way of doing things. And that's totally fine and important to recognize that that will always be there. And we're never going to take that away from anyone. Uh, but you can think of it as Drupal CMS or Starshot will be more for people new to Drupal and focused on helping them find their way and getting them up to speed on Drupal quickly with a much better learning curve. And Drupal core will be for everyone that, um, you know, wants to, um, is maybe more of an expert and already knows what he or she wants to do. It's a very common model, by the way, like even like say Ubuntu or something, you can download Ubuntu core and probably compile your own kernel. <laughs> Or you can start from any of the Ubuntu kind of flavors to help you get started much um, more easily. I, I forgot the names now of these things, but like it, it exists in operating systems. It exists um, even in a way like maybe React and Next.js. You can think, think a little bit about it that way as well, right? Um, and I'm not a front-end developer, so don't shoot me if that doesn't resonate. But um, that, that's, it's, it's a common pattern across... Um, software, I would say, where you have kind of the uh, the core version, the expert version, and then you have sort of flavors of it that are more specialized, but sometimes easier to get into and therefore more broadly appealing. I mean, think about, if, if you know, think about how Linux, it was pretty amazing, but it was really like Red Hat um, and, uh, you know, other distributions, Slackware and others that kind of really made it more appealing for much more. I mean, I remember spending a week trying to get 
X windows to work on my machine. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to try this Red Hat CD-ROM and boom, it just <laughs> worked. And like, I just like spent like multiple days of my life trying to get it to work myself. And it's a little bit like that, I think. I think we forget how hard it can be for somebody to get Drupal to a point where they can actually do what they want it to do. And uh, I think Starshot might help a lot. So I think it could be more broadly appealing, um, yes. But that doesn't mean Drupal core is not important. All right, more, I'll do a couple more questions. Is that all right? Um, um, so Ruben is asking questions about the installer. Um, I think we need to figure out the whole installer. That will be definitely an area where people can help. Like we need to think, what is the install process here? Grant says, uh, sorry if I missed it, but are there any plans in the future to include something similar to the simply usage of themes available through WordPress down the road? Um, we don't have any concrete plans right now. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Grant. Not sure yet. Um, how is the recipe going to be different from Commerce Kickstart, for example? So yeah, that's a good question. Um, so Drupal actually helped, I would say, pioneer this notion of distributions in CMSs. And like, we have a lot of actually distributions. I don't know if you realize this, but we have over a thousand distributions. They may not all work, <laughs> but technically you can go download over a thousand distributions. Uh, Commerce Kickstart, the example that Shikar gives in his question is just one of them. There's many others. And they're basically, you know, Drupal plus modules plus documentation and configuration. So we've had that for, I'm going to say, 15 years in Drupal. And uh, recipes, I think of recipes almost as distributions 2.0. Um, you know, where we've learned so much from recipes over the last 15 years. And we've taken some of these learnings and we're making that recipes. And recipes are essentially completely different to build and maintain uh, than distributions. Distributions have been historically difficult and complex to build and maintain. Recipes will be relatively easy to build and maintain because you specify dependencies in a YAML file. Uh, so to speak, and I'm oversimplifying it. So it will be night and day. Um, and th I think that's one of the challenges of distributions. Like they're wonderful, but the effort that organizations are investing in maintaining their uh, distributions can be very high. And it's actually why I think a lot of distributions kind of fizzle out at some point. Not all of them, but I think a lot of people have uh, given up <clears throat> on maintaining them over time. I would say also one one problem with recipes or with distributions is that they're not uh, composable or stackable, combinable. So let's say let's say my blog uh, would become widely, you know, popular, and I wanted to sell Dries T-shirts <laughs> or something on my blog. Like I couldn't just switch my blog to the Commerce Kickstart distribution. Like I would be like some kind of migration probably, you know? So like once I have a site and I want to add something, I can't switch to a distribution that easily. But with recipes, I would be able to install the commerce recipe and it would add commerce capabilities on top of my existing website. And if later I wanted to add an activity stream or something, maybe I can add the activity stream recipe. So it's somewhere in between modules and distributions, but um, there's a bunch of differences between recipes and distributions, probably more than we can go into here, but um, I will take that forward and make sure that we make that clear to more people. Cool. I think I'm going to wrap it up. We went 30 minutes over. Great. I love it. 
I appreciate all of the questions. Um, we're going to be back with two of those next week, I think. Um, we'll talk more about products and we'll talk more about Experience Builder next week. Um, and we hope you keep attending. As I mentioned, uh, we will publish um, the recording. Um, might write up a little summary as well next week. And uh, we'll also make a formal announcement uh, around the uh, initial leadership team that we've put together. So uh, those things will be next steps for me, uh, probably early next week because I'm flying to Belgium tonight. And uh, yeah, won't have much time on the plane to do that. I'd also have to be like a dinosaur, you know, <laughs> trying to type on a small plane seat. Not that easy. So, all right. With that, I would like to thank all of you for attending and 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 for almost a hundred of you of of sticking it out for an extra thirty minutes. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate your willingness and eagerness uh, to help and and the excitement that you expressed uh, in the beginning. So thank you everyone. Um, and hopefully see you next week. Thanks, Therese. Thanks. Yeah, hey, you're bye, welcome. Everyone. Bring some uh, helmets, etc. cetera, bye. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Be creative. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.